Hey everybody and in this tutorial series today I'm going to be showing you guys how to texture paint this bag in 3D code with all the PBR materials and PBR textures that 3D code has given to us. So in this tutorial series I'm going to be showing you guys how to implement your own textures like for normal maps for fabrics and stuff like that you know as you can see on the bag there's a fabric texture and if you don't like the te some of the textures that you've been given from 3D code you can add your own so in this in this tutorial series I'm going to be showing you how to add your own and I'm also going to be showing you guys how to add stitching on the material level so it's not based on any you don't have to model your stitching I'm just going to be showing you guys how to stitch on the material level as you can see when I click uh, when you press the number four and it shows your models uh, lines and whatever you can jump when, you show, when it shows your models geometry you can see it's only on the material and texture part. If you press two, why well, you got that? Two, uh, no, three. Yeah, three. If you if you press three, you can see that there's nothing like that. There is no 3D part of that stitching. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to also add that, you know, into your models. And um, I'm going to be showing you guys the basic texturing techniques for 3D code users. So if you're a beginner in 3D code, this is going to be a wonderful tutorial for you because it's going to teach you on the basics and and the ways of using 3D code. So uh, enjoy. When you open 3D code, this is what you get. So of course you've got all these things, but you know if you just want to, if you already have a model you want to texture paint. Then this how we're then this how we're gonna start. You know, you can either say paint UV map, mesh that opens up. You know, models that you can paint that are already there for you in 3D code. But uh, I want texture paint my own model, so I'm gonna open my own model. So I'm just gonna press X here. You go to file, import model for per pixel painting. So. I've already designed my bag, that bag, uh, in Blender, and uh, I'm going to be using the exact same bag for designing. So, psh, where did I put that bag? Wow, where did I put my bag? Okay, yes, found it. So from this point, you know, 3D code has to, uh, you know, import your model. So if you get this notification saying the square view reset is too big and stuff, press OK. And the best way to to fix this is to use, uh, is to use auto mapping. Now because of uh, the because of the recording and stuff, I'm gonna put my texture with. This is like how big your textures, uh, how big the textures are gonna be, you know. So 4K is really large, but I'm gonna put on 10.24. UV set name, I can call it bag. Okay. So I, of course, use Blender to de to design this. So I'm gonna keep Blender there. Initial subdivisions, no. Auto mapping. You can, whenever you receive that notification, it's recommended that you use auto mapping because if you just keep UV, it could take a long time to map out but I'm just gonna use auto mapping so you can auto map it for me no smoothing if I've already smoothed out my model and you press OK and it's gonna import your model so, cause, so sometimes this might take a while so sometimes you gotta have to wait as you can see because of my screen recorder being on the echo is gonna take quite a while So my model has been imported now, you know, and it's ready for texture. Okay, it's not really ready for texture painting, but yeah, it's ready for texture painting. Since I'm using a laptop for this, you know, I don't really have a mouse, so I just use the things they've given me up there. So there's my model, my simple bag, and uh, I like it, you know, it looks really nice. So, of course, now you've got nothing. Mainly 3D code will tell you about things. So like, if I had to come and click this, uh, if I had to you have this panel on the side I click on that and I do that and then yeah it's there but because 3D codes on you know you have to add certain things 
Now, on this model, there's no AO, ambient occlusion, or any curvature map. So, if 3D code doesn't remind you about it, you can do it yourself. Come to textures and say, calculate occlusion. You say, I'm in occlusion. And you get this if you want to read it or something, you can. But I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to press OK. And it's going to bake your occlusion map. So sometimes it might take a while, but you can see the percentage over here on how far the baking of the clues is taking, you know. So my main inclusion has been baked, and you can see over here, it's been baked. Now a panel has appeared, I mean inclusion. You can click, either you want to make it visible or not, but since it's a PBR texturing, we're going to keep it visible. So from this point, you know, now you need to calculate and bake your curvature, which is gonna it's gonna find those points on the mesh that curve. So since this is a really basic mesh, you know, it doesn't really use a really high kind of polygons. As you can see when you press four, it just these are the basic polygons. It doesn't use a lot of polygons. It's not that hard, it's not gonna take long. But if your model has a lot of, you know, uh, vertices, polygons, it's going to take quite a while sometimes, but it's fine the way it is. So from this point you can press 4 again to remove that, and you can press textures and calculate curvature. So initially this is quite a quicker calculation, but if it takes a while, it's not going to be a problem. So as you can see our curvature map has been baked, and again another panel has appeared, but this one's invisible. Now the reason it's invisible is because the curvature is mapped that is based on other textures to work with it. But if you want to see how it's working, it's going to show you where the curves are. See, so it has calculated your curves around around your mesh, showing you where the curves are and where you can stop adding a texture where the texture ends. You know, so those are the curvature maps. Mainly, it works around the seams of of a of a, of a, of a model. So you can make it invisible again, and if you want to check, you can see. If you want to see how your UV set looks, you can go to UV, and you can see your UV set over here. How your unwrap is gone, and so far at this point, I'm pretty cool. I, I kind of like my my UV set. I like it. Uh, if you want to, you can add your seams. You can mark seams, remove them if you want clear clusters, but. Uh, for now, if you if you perfectly modeled your model and you and you're fine with it, I do not see the purpose or the point of having to, you know, tweak with it, tweak it in 3D code because sometimes that might cause mesh problems or your 3D code might crash or I don't know, I don't know. Sometimes that happens, but I suggest to not touch any of these panels for now since you're a beginner. Just leave it the way it is and carry on carry on texturing. And if you want to tweak it, you can tweak it up here. You know, it's got tweaking, moving, sm uh, smudging. So at this point, I really, I would really like to add some small smudges because it's a bag. You know, so I'd like to click on smudge. You don't really have to do it to your mesh if you don't want to. And from there, you can click on a on a brush. You know, an alpha actually. You can click on that and. Since I'm using a laptop, I have to press uh, right, I have to hold the right mouse key and drag out. And that happens, so yeah. And then, so I can just add some points that, so I can just put a bag and kind of imperfect. I want that whole imperfect look. So I can do that, I can do that. So when you start the texture painting, now you can check, press 4, and some of your lines may have moved, some of them, but it's okay. It's not really a major problem. So press 4 again, and uh, now we're going to get into the PBR textures that 3D Coach provided us. So right now we're on the default, you know, as you can see, there's a lot of things here that you can use that you might like. You can click on any of them, and you think, oh, this is nice, I would like to use this. You click on it and uh, it's going to give you this. 
and you can see now if you're a beginner you really like how these things look these basic things help for beginners you know you like how it looks it looks really nice but you want to have to make a bag look a certain way so I always think that having a reference image or how if you're designing something that already has been created you can look at references on how they look you know so I've got some reference images that I got from a website I saw this bag as I was scrolling along I saw this bag and I liked it I liked its whole design you know so I use this similar design uh, with the dark brown the light brown yeah so we're gonna use the same way of design even though the bags aren't really alike because this is really quick a quickly done mesh so, the, so we're gonna start with the fabric so the fabric shows brownish so I already have done it and when you go to fabric when you click this panel from if you just click the panel it's gonna these are gonna pop up so you you have the basic I have my own ones that I've added but these are mainly the basic the denim and the other denim denim too so for this I want to use a bag so I've made my own bag texture like how it looks on brown so when you go down here and you view it, it looks looks it looks really fine it looks fine let's zoom in a little bit zoom in a little bit more Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit more so we can see if you can see that whole fabric. Normal map. You can see it, but it's really, really tiny. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to be really close to see it. But we want to see it just from the moment we look at our bag. So when you're when you're making your own PBR materials or small materials, you're gonna use sometimes you can use what 3D code is given to you so like if I had to click like right click on this and into smart material editor I used the mm, let me just say load I used the fabric like for the normal map I used the pattern the, the jeans fabric which comes with 3D code in its in the documents file you can find it in your documents under the 3D code stuff yeah under the materials so I use this material for the normal map because it comes with the with this gene material. So I just took it and to get the other color, I used the exact same one, but I tweaked it a little bit. I removed all the coloring, made it black and white, so I can texture it here. So practically, what it looks like, I took it and I did this to it. I removed all the coloring and made made it look really basic. So we go back into 3D code. So as a back into 3D code, you know, you can get to see your material. And after that, you're gonna go to this section. Uh, so you saw what it looked like, and it was really, it was really high, like it was really scaled up. So we wanna to scale it. So when you see this preview option, this is the options and how you can transform your or optimize your texture. This is to rotate the texture, this is to move around the texture, to zoom in, and uh, I forgot what this is, because I don't, I don't really use it. But we're going to be using zoom in because we want to decrease the scale. So if you right click and drag, left click actually and drag, okay, I can't see much, I don't know why I, don't know why I can't see much. Okay, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see. Okay, as you can see a texture, I'm zooming in, I'm zooming in, I'm zooming in, and now you can see the bump map more. So we'll zoom in a little bit. So here you're left clicking and dragging. When you drag to the when you drag to the right, it, it increases like the scale. When you drag to the left, it decreases. So this is if you're using a pad or just use these, yeah. And also you can see the tools over here. So you drag there and now since you can see how it's rotated it's rotated in a different angle and you want to make it horizontal so from that point we're gonna use this rotate we're gonna rotate it as you can see it's rotating it's rotating and yeah that looks good enough looks like you can use that so if we zoom out 
now I'll take our smart until preview panel and we right click on that part now you can see the uh, you know the map of uh, material much better so from here you see it does it look good you like it great so we're going to be applying the you know that cloth material on the parts of the bag where it, it seems it needs cloth so we're going to add it uh, just come to this part and fill tool we're going to use the fill tool so we're going to call we're going to come down here to this layer we're going to call this layer uh, base let's just call it base base yes base looks base seems good and then we're gonna left click on this to paint it fill it actually to fill it so after you've painted after the fill has been applied so the reason why it's quite de-resolutioned or you can't see properly is because the resolution we're using right now the, res the resolution I'm using is actually 10 to 24 so it's really less so a lot of things will be that visible but this is just because of the, the screen recorder so we're gonna add some cloth over there and then we're gonna also need it on this on this pocket patch here just gonna add it and that looks good yeah that looks pretty good I like it and in case the other parts of the bag look like they need bagging um, So at this point, yeah, this looks like a part. This looks like it's good enough for this part of the video. So in the next video, we're going to be adding some leather to the leather parts of the video and some metal to make it look more realistic. If you want more tutorials on such videos, you know, subscribe and like and comment. And I'll provide people, I'll provide you guys with more tutorials. And trust me, I'm not going to disappoint you guys. So uh, have a wonderful day.